Thanks for joining us. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we're going to do a broadhead review video. If you're looking for the best broadhead for hunting for your specific purposes, that's what this video is dedicated for. I'm going to go over my specific field use and my experience with each of these over the last three years. We got the Day 6 versus the uh, Valkyrie versus Annihilator. This is the Day 6 Evo 125, and this is the Valkyrie Blood Eagle 175, and this here is the Annihilator 125. They each are great broadheads, but I had some different experiences with each of them over the course of three years. I shot each of them for an entire year, start to finish, got my bow tuned, uh, target practice, taking the animal with them, that sort of thing. I'm gonna go over all of that with you. At the end of this video, make sure you stick around. I'm gonna shoot each of these on camera and so you can hear the difference in flight that each of them make. There's some slight differences here you wanna, wanna pay attention to. Put a link to all these down in the description for you, as well as a link to my website, backwardspursuit.com, where there's a ton of other gear reviews and a link to Facebook and Instagram down in the description. Go check those out. Let's get started on this review. First up, let's look at the Annihilator. This is the 125 grain model, but it also comes in 100 up to 150 grain and a standard or XL size, various uh, weights within those designations. The steel is 4140 alloy steel and the 52 Rockwell hardness. So it's a nice hard steel, but it's also not so hard that it's difficult to sharpen. You can sharpen this fairly easily out in the field if you need to. And uh, I found it fairly easy to sharpen, so that was a real benefit to the Annihilator. And you can tell it's kind of a shorter, uh, shorter length overall. It's a, a, a different design than a lot of other broadheads out there versus something like the uh, Valkyrie here, which is a much longer in its overall length. Now with the Day 6 Evo here, this is 125 grain. Day 6 makes broadheads in the 100 to 175 grain, uh, the weights there. It's a two blade with a bleeder, as you can see. It's a, a super sharp S30V steel and a 59 to 60 Rockwell hardness. Very, uh, very tough steel, and it's a little more difficult to sharpen than something like the Annihilator here. At least I found it was a little more difficult that way. Obviously, the toughness and the, the, uh, the hardness of the steel makes that dip more difficult to sharpen, but uh, it can retain an edge very well also. Now the Valkyrie Blood Eagle here, as you can tell, it's a much longer design. It's a three blade broadhead and this uh, it comes in at 150 grain all the way up to 250 grain from Valkyrie. This is the Blood Eagle and so this screws right into a, a standard, uh, standard arrow, standard uh, arrow shaft just like any other broadhead out there but they also have their center pin arrows and their full design that way. That's their full setup. This is just if you are wanting to use and test out their broadheads on a standard arrow shaft, this is the way you want to go with the Blood Eagles. Uh, it is a 58 to 60 Rockwell hardness, a high carbon tool steel, really, really hard, really uh, uh, much more difficult to sharpen these, but also much more difficult to dull them as well because of that uh, in the, the high, car high carbon tool steel. We'll go over sharpening here in a minute, but but I found that it really retained an edge well uh, on these Valkyrie Blood Eagles. Now, as far as design differences here, you can see that the Annihilator and the Blood Valkyrie Blood Eagle, they're both one piece solid steel. And then the Day 6 here is a replaceable blade style. You've got the bleeders there and the blades. So even if you br break off a blade, you can replace that. Whereas with the Valkyrie and the Annihilator, you can either sharpen them or once they get chipped or, or broken, something like that, they are going to have to be replaced entirely. Um, I found that I just absolutely loved the Valkyrie sharpening system, not just for the Valkyrie arrows, but for these uh, the, the Annihilator broadheads as well. Really any three blade style broadhead works really, really well. Uh, the Valkyrie uh, has that the sharpening wheel, you, the, you put attach it to your grinder and it really works well. Now I did find that you have really have got to have that system to do a good job of sharpening these Valkyrie broadheads. This, it's, they're so, uh, the steel is so hard that you really need to have that to really hone in and fine tune that. Now with the Day 6, it, I found this one to be the most difficult of the three to sharpen because it, you know, it requires more of a traditional sharpening style where you've got to, to hand sharpen it. You'll put it on, a, on some kind of a, a work sharp st a style or something like that. So it takes a little bit more of, of fine tuning your skills as, a, as sharpening or just to buy a replacement blade that works as well. Now, both, the, both of those work really well, but you know, something that, 
that comes with having a replaceable blade is that if the blade breaks, you can purchase new blades, replace them, and you won't have to go with a full new setup. And these bleeders are designed to break off upon contact, and we'll go over that a little bit more. Now, I found the Annihilator to be the easiest to sharpen, particularly on that Valkyrie sharpening system. It worked really, really well. Uh, it's easier to sharpen in the field too if you take a work sharp with you or something like that some kind of diamond steel just run it across that and it sharpens up really quick and all three of them are cut on contact as well right now as far as durability on all these like i mentioned i used all of them for an entire year uh, all the way from sighting my bow in to, to out in the field taking an animal or two uh, and here is one of the the uh, blood eagles the valkyrie blood eagles that i used this was actually shot at and it took an animal with this broadhead it you know I, I practiced with it you can see a little bit on the edge right there uh, it took a little bit of a beating on some rocks and whatnot but it really turned it it didn't show much of any signs of wear at all uh, even when i shot into a, you know, a pile of rocks that sort of thing it really came out really well didn't have any issues with durability at all with the valkyrie blood eagle uh, same thing here on the annihilator i used it for a whole year this is an actual broadhead that i missed the target on taking a, some long range shots and hit directly into a pile of rocks and you can see on that guy there's a little bit of, of a chipping on the edges it more more or less relegated to a practice broadhead for me but it's you could still sharpen this and use this on animal if you wanted to it did really really well also in regards to its durability here on the day six this is an actual broadhead that i shot into the ground into the dirt a couple times into the target used it a bunch you can see it definitely took its lumps it seemed to be a little bit more affected by missing a target shooting into dirt than the, the uh, Annihilator or the Valkyrie. It you know, was able to be sharpened up, but it, you know, this one here in particular I've shot over and over, and it's become my practice broadhead, and it's pretty beat up at this point. But the nice thing is you can replace those blades, get that right back to with a replaceable blade, uh, get that right back to being brand new, ready for the field. Uh, and that's one of the benefits of that replaceable blade option with the Day6 Evo. Now let's talk about flight. Now, that's something that's talked about a lot, but my personal opinion is that if your bow is tuned really, really well, most of the time you're going to get pretty good broadhead flight, especially if you're doing your, your bear shaft tuning and really getting your arrow flying really well before you throw a broadhead on here. That's been my experience with all three of these. They all flew right with my field points. I didn't have to make any adjustment whatsoever with the Annihilator when I stuck that on there. Same with the Valkyrie. I had made make a really, really small adjustment with the Day 6 and it was just right there with my field tips. I practiced with these from 20 yards all the way out to almost 100 yards with all of them and I couldn't distinguish any, any flight that wasn't uh, the same as my field tips outside of my human error at, at those longer distances. I'd never take a shot at an animal that far but I like to practice sometimes just to get that good experience. So uh, in testing for these longer range shots with these, they all did really, really well. So now a big one here is the lethality and the blood trail. Um, that's of course a very uh, controversial topic as far as how, if I get a good blood trail or if I don't. So I'm just gonna share my personal experience with each of these. I have taken an elk with the, the Valkyrie Blood Eagle, this 175 like I mentioned earlier, as well as the Annihilator 125 here. I have not yet taken an animal with the Day 6 Evo. I wasn't able to get a, uh, a shot at anything last year, so that's uh, unfortunately wasn't able to, to you know, detail anything on that. But uh, from design perspective, I anticipate this to give you a really good blood trail, but I don't have any personal experience that way. Now, first with the Valkyrie here, this is the first one I started testing about two and a half, three years ago. I took, uh, again, like I mentioned, an elk with this, and the, the, the animal expired very, very quickly within 40 or 50 yards of where the shot took place and had a really good blood trail. Didn't really even need one. I could, I could see it when it expired anyways, but I did look at the blood trail. It was very easy to follow. Uh, I did have the opportunity at a follow-up shot, a second shot. Got great penetration with this. Both shots went all the way through, clean through. One was at, I believe, 30, uh, 35 yards. The other one was 45 yards. Both times it went all the way through the, the, uh, the animal. So really good penetration and really good blood trail there. Uh, two years ago, it took an, an elk with the, an, uh, the annihilator here. It was about 40 yards and it was a good double lung shot. I, oh, I forgot to mention on the Valkyrie here, the, shot was, the first shot was a little bit forward and the second shot was, was a good double lung shot. So obviously you're gonna get a, a better blood trail when you get two arrows in an animal. The Annihilator here had one, one shot, a 40 yard shot, a good double lung shot right out of the gate, right in the crease behind the front shoulder. The animal expired in about 150 yards. 
um, and I got about two drops of blood on this. Uh, and again, it's a lung shot, so a lot of times the insides of an animal can plug up those holes. So that was my experience taking the animal with the annihilator. I wasn't real happy with the blood trail, uh, but at the same time, obviously, uh, every situation is so different with the blood trail. So sometimes you can have what seem like two identical shots and have a very different blood trail uh, outcome on those. But what this did provide when I did find the animal it was really a frothy, bubbly. You could tell the insides of the animal were completely destroyed and it was really did a number on the interior and it expired very, very quickly, did a ton of damage. And that's why the animal expired so quickly. Uh, so good result. I just wish the blood trail would have been better on that. But again, that was my experience with the animal I took. And again, wasn't able to take an animal with the day six. I'm hoping to this year and I'll provide some more results on that. But from what I can tell, I, I really do like these designs of a two blade with a bleeder. Uh, and because, you know, if you're going to hit, if you do hit a bone, that two blade is awesome. It's going to, it's going to really provide the best penetration possible. You have less surface area that's restricting the penetration. And these bleeders are designed to break off if they hit heavy bone. And I actually had that happen when I was testing these. I missed a target, as I mentioned earlier, with, with one of these day six. And that, that, that bleeder did it broke right off and I just had the two blade left. So it does work as designed. And I look forward to being able to take an animal with the day six and see how the blood trail is, see how, they, how fast they expire, that sort of thing. Uh, looking forward to that. Now let's go to how they sound in flight. It's something that's important. You want a quiet broadhead, obviously, and some are quieter than others. But uh, here in a second, I'll show the video of shooting all three of these side by side, one after the other with the camera at different angles. So let's jump to that video. You can hear for yourself. To me, the, the one that had the most hiss or the most noise was the Annihilator. And I did a video specifically on this after I took that animal. I'll put a link up there for you so you can check out more of the details on this. Uh, next up, just barely behind the Valkyrie, uh, the Day 6 Evo, a very, very quiet head. Um, but the, I thought that the Valkyrie was just a touch heavy, or a touch quieter, even though it has a vented uh, that's a vented in the blades. I figured the venting would have made that uh, not as quiet, but uh, definitely to my ear and to what I could see in the video here in the video the Valkyrie seemed to be the quietest just a touch over the day six now last but not least the sharpness out of the box they are all fantastic right out of the box they are super sharp but I would give the edge to the day six as far as sharpness out of the box these things are just scary sharp out of the box so is the Valkyrie uh, it's it's an incredibly sharp it's interesting though you can handle the Valkyrie easier and not get yourself cut uh, more so than the day six and the the annihilator as well is pretty easy to handle the annihilator also was very sharp out of the box but not quite as sharp i found i wanted to to touch that up just a little bit more than the other two but it takes an edge really really nicely if you're shooting into a target and then just need to touch it up it does really good that way it sharpens up really nice and quick now one last thing i wanted to mention is the jag wax that you can get from valkyrie this stuff i played around with it when i was shooting the valkyries and man, it really, really made a difference on penetration in the target. I'd shoot one with this and next to it, shoot another one without it. Again, it's a target, it's a foam target. It's not consistent all the way through. But what was consistent is I consistently got better penetration when I put the, the Jag Wax on there. So I went ahead and did that. Uh, and whenever I was, when I was hunting with the Valkyrie Blood Eagle here, I used that Jag Wax. The downside to that is the wax, it's kind of like a petroleum type jelly and it attracted a lot of dirt and leaves and that sort of thing when you're out walking around so it's kind of a bummer you pull it out and it's uh, you know got dirt or leaves or whatnot uh, pull it out of your quiver and it's got that stuff on there so uh, not a big deal but i did like the way that that added to the penetration as far as on your arrows you can use that really for any of these and uh, i imagine it would help with the penetration there so something to consider as well the jaguar is pretty cool stuff so that's my experience with these three broadheads. They're all very different in their design and functionality, but also very good broadheads. Uh, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts, your comments, your experiences with these. Drop that down in the comments section. Uh, I use the Day6 HD Arrows. It's a great arrow, really, really super durable, but uh, Valkyrie makes a great arrow with their center pin system as well. Another one to check out if you like a high FOC arrow. 
in any regard, these are fantastic arrows and fantastic broadheads here, but I'd love to hear your thoughts or your opinions. Thanks for watching here today. Again, link to all these down in the description. We'll see you next time.